All right, so the first one is actually uh, something that I've experienced quite a bit of. And actually, have, have you been, have you ever dated like a stripper? Or is this something not too smart for that? <laughs> French. I remember the days I was out with a cat, so born for the trap, but I done that stuff. Nowadays, I'll be out with a- To be fair, too, I've also never dated anybody from any, like, major university, so I guess that goes both ways. So, well, I, so I had a, my best friend in the past, I uh, <sighs> dated a stripper, and that kind of gave me An perspective idea. as to, to what might happen if you do that. Yeah, so for the most part, it's, <clears throat> the girls, the, the girls are oftentimes- pretty wild they're pretty crazy they're very open to insane experiences so you guys are trying to get you know very wild relationships very sexually free and adventurous and adventurous relationships strippers are amazing at it but <clears throat> when they I, know how to you know make a guy feel good physically because that's yeah kind of the you know the yeah. job so they're they're good at using their bodies if you will <clears throat> right? in a manipulative way too they're, they're well awesome. that's <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, they oftentimes, <clears throat> the ones that I've dated, and I've dated, I've dated a few, and I've also messed I around with a lot more, uh, unfortunately. Uh, and I've also messed around with some sex workers. Not paying them, by the way, just in case you guys are curious. I've never actually paid anybody for anything. Well, if you mean OnlyFans, I mean, who hasn't? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll put it this way. <clears throat> if you're going to date a stripper, just understand there's baggage involved with it. Don't ever, consider, don't ever think about dating one necessarily seriously, because for the most part, they're oftentimes very mentally fucked up. They, they... Most girls that get into this industry are, and I, I mean, by most, I mean almost all of them, they, they have some kind of mental, they have some kind of trauma in their past that made it okay, more normal for them to, to express themselves in this way. We actually, I, we actually talked about a theory at one point, actually you brought this up and this actually made sense to me. Um, we were talking about a theory about maybe when a father figure is very distant in a girl's life, maybe she, she learns to, to almost express herself more sexually to try to get more attention from men to try to fill that space. Yeah, there's been scientific studies that show when uh, women, if they don't have a father figure, they actually go through puberty at a younger age. And the theory behind why that is, is because if you don't have a father figure, that's he would provide protection and resources. Let's talk like evolutionary ancient times, especially. He'd provide all these things that, that children need. And if you can't get it from your father, you can kind of subvert that into another man if you hit puberty at an early age, if you end up being more sexually promiscuous uh, and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. so, so there may be a connection there. Why don't you think that, like, devil's advocate, why can't a lot of women who become strippers, why isn't it just because, A, it makes a lot of money, maybe they mm -hmm. enjoy it, it's fun, it's, uh, you know, some kind of artistic expression in a way, mm -hmm. and uh, it's something that is both enjoyable and makes a crap load of money. Why wouldn't that be one of the main reasons? There is a percentage of girls that actually do that, <clears throat> to be fair. Um, those girls are usually the adventurous types, the ones that like traveling, which uh, to be fair to a lot of strippers that are also the other way love traveling. The other girls that like- <coughs> Often with benefactors. <laughs> they oftentimes will have men, they'll actually pay for them to travel around. So why not? If, if I had some uh, rich benefactor, some woman off in a far off country, some old lady being like, hey. Want to come to Dubai in a private jet? in a private jet. Well, pay for all my dinner? You know, you just sit in my bed and pretend to like be my be in a relationship with me? I doubt that's all they ask, but. If my mom is watching this, uh, no. Definitely not. I would never go for this. I'm not sure it's working. But for everybody else. <laughs> you know what I mean. So I, I get it. I'm not, I'm not even like dissing on it too much. I, I do get how this can be a very like slippery slope though with some of these girls. Like they, they get used to just being given everything and then they never develop any skill sets. And once they lose the looks, what happens is oftentimes they go downhill really hard. And I've seen this where these girls crumble and there's a lot of drugs in the stripper scene. A lot of these girls have to get messed up to even do their job. There's a lot of cocaine. There's a lot of pills. There's a lot of alcohol. Every strip club has drinks and they incentivize their girls to drink because they're going to get a little bit more wild. So they're oftentimes like, um, <clears throat> my very first, uh, stripper ex, um, uh, my, my, actually my friend, uh, actually, um, walk in she was in the, the strip club he went to and, uh, she was high as all hell on cocaine. She was like, just, just strung the hell out and it, it hurt my feelings a little bit because she was a really sweet girl, even though she was absolutely fucking nuts. Don't get me wrong. She was, she was uh, diagnosed with borderline. No, not borderline, uh, bipolar. Bipolar disorder. That one had bipolar disorder. Borderline is rarely diagnosed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that one's actually so much more common, too. It's an underdiagnosed disease. As You actually mentioned it to me. You were talking mm -hmm. about that earlier. Um, which are both, ter like, by the way, terrible diseases. I uh, never date a girl. With, you should never date a girl either. Um, they're, they're oftentimes the, the, some of the worst girls to date in regards to actually having a healthy relationship that is stable. Well, the problem is a lot of women with borderline <clears throat> 
yeah, they're not diagnosed with it. So how do you know that they even have it? That that becomes the problem. Yeah. But like I said, they're oftentimes they, they make aside from their, their crazy bouts, they make very exciting friends. They may they have they're very exciting in bed. They're very wild, they're open to threesomes, they're very they're very free spirited. Oftentimes they have the grace of adventures. they we dragged one of us dragged uh, one of mine dragged us through the woods. You were mad about this too. Not through the woods, but through the mud. And there was like she was taking us to this waterfall and then the sun started setting. And you were like, she had me this. bring my, it was a, I had a $1,500 <laughs> camera. She wanted to take pictures of it and yeah. it made it sound like it was going to be, oh, just a little walk. And it's, it's going through water. And, and then she's trying to hike, yeah. like, they trying to walk this like narrow path between like the waterfall and then like the very slippery with mud. Like, so it's like the chances of breaking the camera or like just falling and breaking some bones yeah. were very high and not worth a picture in the, it was in the dark anyway. Yeah. She was. A little bit much, but um, th- there's so many, like, you guys can't expect, like, a monogamous relationship with somebody that's ever, that's ever been a stripper. I mean, unless they've gone through a lot of counseling, unless they've gone through a lot of therapy, unless they had a lot of self-reflection. and uh, Or they happen to be one of the ones who was doing it for different reasons. Yeah. They're, right? they're, they're doing it because out of enjoyment rather than out of using and desperation for a lot of money. There are some that are doing it because they like the idea of venture and they're about, they're about filling their palette of life and they want to, like, do everything before they die. But those ones, I, I've seen personally a lot more that are the other way. So it's, it's hard to find those girls. If you do find those girls and that's your thing, hell yeah. But I'll say this, <clears throat> I, I wouldn't recommend necessarily dating a stripper seriously. If you're going to be dating one of these girls, don't expect them to be monogamous with you. Don't expect like, and if you do try to tie a girl like this down into being monogamous and she agrees, but she's reluctant, that's... But one, okay, I both of the, the cases where I had close friends who dated strippers, in both cases, the stripper was the one that tried to tried to tie the guy down or successfully tied the guy down. So it, yeah, that's actually a lot. That's a lot and, and then both of those relationships were not great. In one case, my friend from years ago, um, she quit her job for, you know, partly he wanted her to, but, right, and then never got a different job. Right. And that, so now she was just basically taking a lot of his money to be supported. And then she ended up never leaving the house. She became more and more like inside. They just like lived in their room, in their room together and played video games eight hours a day might be a 15 year old fantasy but that gets old pretty quick and it gets depressing pretty Mm -hmm. quick and then they started just drinking uh bottles every day together and they also were always fighting and always super toxic and it was just it got it went from at the beginning fun and exciting to quickly getting uh very dark there's a russell brand uh quote that kind of reminds me of what dating strippers is like you don't want to be around me when the laughter stops (laughs) (laughs) so after that first like couple hours when you start to get used to me uh, it starts to go downhill very quickly. And I think the psychology of strippers, if you think, what is their job? Their job is to learn how to extract resources from men. That, that's what they're doing. To make a trade of their body, so, so sexuality, in exchange for resources, in exchange for money. And that you do that again and again and again every day. And you learn, first of all, men are very receptive to this and they seem very satisfied by this when it's a business relationship. Yeah. It's only like one dance or two dances or whatever. So it works. They enjoy it. It seems like a win-win scenario, but then it's very easy to superimpose that into your relationships because that's what you've been trained to do. And so I think what a lot of strippers believe on this unconscious level is that what a relationship is about, he gives me resources, I give him sexuality Mm -hmm. and that should be enough i don't have to be you know whether or not i'm charming or i have my own passions or um i'm like treat him well or respect him or any of those kinds of things eh, kind of irrelevant that is the 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 focal point of their relationships because that's uh what they what they learn through hundreds if not thousands of hours of doing that again and again and again and that is going to lead to uh, relationships that are likely in my from what I've seen, not to be the most satisfying. Yeah, you, all right, yeah, you kind of hit that on the nail. So it, what he said is actually a little more correct on this. They're very quick to tie you down and they're very fast to try to get, it's, it's a very toxic relationship. There's probably exceptions, but. Yeah, well, yeah. A lot of them, like they're either, they're either codependents or narcissists, um, most of them narcissists, and they're oftentimes lit, like riddled with mental diseases. So they're either super avoidant and they run away or they're super, and they, they're the super, um, desperate and, and they once they once they find somebody that they love or like love i'm gonna throw quotations around that they, they pull them in and then they will not let them go and i mean by not let them go i mean they'll chase them they'll hunt them down they'll like i i've 
I've had instances of being chased through parking garages <coughs> um, multiple times, actually. By, uh, like, a Yeti or, or a... Stripper. Coyote? Oh, a, pi- a girl. Yeah. Okay. Was, but that's, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, because I was trying to get some space or I was trying to break up with her. And, right. and which, which attachment style is that? By the way, there's something called attachment theory in psychology <laughs> that you may not all be aware of. It's a very important part, uh, very important to understand because I'd say the majority of modern Americans really have one of the unhealthy types of attachment and the healthy one is rarer. But if you want a healthy relationship, that's what you need. Because otherwise, you're either unable to uh, connect with someone, you always need to be avoidant, or you get overly needy, overly just like clingy as hell. Uh, what are the what's the one that you're describing there? Uh, that one is the knee. It's called the uh, shoot. Is it anxious? Anxious, the anxious love style. And then there's the avoidant. Then there's the healthy. And then there's actually a fourth, which I don't 100 percent understand yet. But it's the fearful, the fearful. Okay. So there's technically four that I've heard of. There's three that are mainly more well known though. Yeah. The first one is basically where you're just really comfortable and calm and relaxed in the relationship. Now if the relationship doesn't work out. You're like I love and I'm happy with being by myself, so I can walk away from this because this isn't healthy. Now, then there's the uh, the avoidant. Basically, what avoidant does is that once a relationship starts getting a little bit more intimate, they start pushing away and they start running. Now, then there's the other one, which is the the uh, anxious. This one is the one where it's like, I need this relationship, and they do a death grip on the relationship, trying to keep it there. And all like the, those last two can be massively toxic in their own ways. The, the anxious one might not sound immediately bad, but here's the problem. They need you so bad, they're willing to do anything to keep you. And that means that they're going to, they're willing to be manipulative. They're willing to manipulate you to try to keep you there because they see you as more as an object than a person. They don't care if like they don't care if being by yourself and being single is better for you because then they would be suffering because now they're they're you're gone. They're their sense of happiness. So they're gonna do anything to keep you there. You're like you're like errors. What it means with the fairy tales on a cast up blind by the way that started. It's a shame when you walk, but you came to the car for the crack, not chatting and part. I got a gauge with a gun and a cartridge shit blasted, I got away from the now what the fuck did I pass it? Should have glassed and we got away from the target. Now, now I got this one single in my life, shit, I feel quite